In 2016, I took a sabbatical from my job for three months to work on my debut instrumental music album titled Think Void. I devoted the first month to research and conceptualization of the album and focus on composing and producing it in the remaining months. As I approached the final days of research around the fifth element in Indian schools of thought, what we call akasha or ether or void, I stumbled upon this magnificent Nataraja temple at Chidambaram. Shame on me for discovering it so late. I was always fascinated by history and architecture since school. Yeah, one of those outliers who loved history and scored high. When the serendipity of Chidambaram and Ether presented itself before me, I was completely taken over by it. I travelled to the temple to confirm on the metaphysics, aspects like Sadhyojat, which in English means sudden born or epiphany, uh, was facing west in the temple, much like in the metaphysical symbology of the creator Brahma. The frequency of the temple interestingly corresponded to the musical note D or Ri, which is short for Rishabham, metaphysically denoted by Shiva's vehicle Nandi, the Rishabha. So I got back and I based some of the tracks within the album to my understanding of the concept of ether and its manifestation in the Chidambaram temple. As some of you may know, the Nataraja statue has an astonishing astronomical significance. The statue is modeled on the Orion constellation and on the day of Arudra, which falls sometime in December, January, the star Betelgeuse, as it is known in the West, is aligned to the idol in the temple. You will be wondering why am I saying all this? Well, it turns out that the concept of the element ether itself is fractal in nature. It is bigger than the biggest, yet smaller than the smallest. Akasha, as it is conceived, is all-pervading. And at the temple, this fractal nature is so aesthetically presented to us, we really must bow down to our elders and ancients. Personally, it was an overwhelming experience and every time it is, to be one with divinity under the open skies with the fractal nature of the universe right before you, us included, as above, so below. Well, the album was finally released after the sabbatical and what it did to me internally eventually led me to quit corporate life for good and no, not for music, but to focus my entire life on unearthing untold stories of our heritage. My name is Ajit Padmanabh and I am the founder of Who We Are, a startup where we are all passionate about leveraging virtual reality to help us connect to our heritage and cultural roots. Well, with the album out, I started working on concerts to promote the album. And I had these grand stage ideas, as they say, with elaborate orchestration. And when I think about it now, I pity those who heard these ideas. One day I had this vision. Yes, during the day I have visions, told you I am an outlier. There are people experiencing my music wearing bands around their head and in tents, dancing and watching my concert from far-flung areas and I was blown away with this vision. The concert had all kinds of stages, moving stages, crumbling stages, historical cities morphing into one another and during the course of the concert even two of me, I was blown away. I remember John Lennon once said and I quote, Life happens to you while you are busy making other plans. And rightly so. Here I was looking to promote my music and to my surprise, my inner entrepreneur birthed. I eventually realized the power of virtual reality to create worlds, past, present, future, you name it. And the ability to present an incredibly immersive form of storytelling, learning and experience life like never before. It transports audience to an alternate universe, much like what cinema does today, only at a larger scale and with a better form factor. 
At Who We Are, my mission is to marry the ancient with the modern and bring out the sciences, the architecture, the art, the metaphysics, the astronomy behind our ancient heritage, you know, our temples, sites, ruins, all across the country. Bring it on. Imagine all the untold stories about these temples, the artisans who worked there, the kings who sponsored them, simple tales which you might have never heard of. For example, do you know the height of the temple or the monolith is proportionate to the height of the main sponsor, mostly the king? Or that the temple architecture follows principle of fractals? Yes, they do. There is an old saying in our uh, ancient texts, Yatha Pindanda, Tatha Brahmanda. It just means that whatever is in the macrocosmos reflects in the microcosmos. And this is exactly what the temples reflect. So there, each of these temple architecture provides a scaled human body as the foundation of these temples. Look at the Tanjore temple or this Hoysala temple in Belur. Their tools were elaborate and their skills were exquisite. We owe it to our elders to not only preserve their works, unparalleled even today, but also honor and imbibe their values of dedication and patience. Because most of the temple's construction spanned across generations. We should consider ourselves fortunate to see these structures in their complete form, something the artisans sacrificed their entire lives for and were not able to see. When like-minded professionals from different walks of life converge on a purpose far greater than either of them, something unique manifests. And that has been the case with who we are. Thanks to ancient and modern historians' accounts, experiencing ancient grandeur back in their day as a time travel nugget is now possible. And here's one such time travel experience of the Nandi monolith at Lepakshi in the present Andhra Pradesh. What you will see in the video is an experience uh, that is scaled and Nandi's enormity is evident as compared to your height, which is extremely important for an immersive experience. And it allows you to truly lose yourself in the sheer grandeur of its presence. As you explore this terrain, this becomes a uniquely personal experience. At least that's what we hope it becomes for you. How about traveling back in time? Welcome to Lepakshi. 400 years ago, look all around you. Such greenery. What led such a land to become one of the most arid today? Turns out that during the British Raj, Forest lands were raised in large numbers with the wood used to develop the railway coaches and wooden sleepers below the tracks. With time, the ecosystem that the forests housed went extinct, making the land today arid. A topography that is absolutely calm and pristine with her natural springs. This used to nest mighty elephants and bears prowling the nights from their rocky dens. This is just one of the many dark secrets that the Royal Sima Forest hides from plain sight. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we are living in the best of times. Technology today provides us immense opportunities to realize possibilities that would have been impossible just decades ago. My goal, therefore, is to leverage the latest and the greatest and bring them to India for our citizens to experience and cherish our past. Let me talk to you about this new field called archaeoacoustics. It is a field concerned with the effects of sound in past societies. It tries to understand the human past beyond its materiality by recovering a set of less tangible cultural signs relating to the sense of hearing. This cave art, for example, is from France and is one of the oldest ever. Archaeoacoustic researchers recorded the ambient sounds of these caves and results suggest that motifs in general or lines and dots, you know, whatever those forms are, are statistically more likely to be found in places where reverberation is moderate and where the low frequency acoustic response has evidence of a resonant behavior. Does this mean that our ancients 
new sounds or the purpose of the sound and they chose such caves for their art. We are trying to explore these kind of properties in our temples. So whenever we go to our temples, we record sounds using this ambisonic recorder and recreate the most sonically pure experience to help us understand if there is any such link. All right, how about narrating the history of a city or a town, giving the viewer a sense of deep-rooted history amidst the urban bustle today, helping people connect with their hometown, in essence, connecting with their roots. Imagine what this could do for tourism, travel, wellness, edtech, and a host of other verticals. Another exciting possibility is what I call heritage games. Games on PC console or VR that allow you to build temples or learn the various symbologies based on ancient temple architecture. And you know, you end up creating a work of heritage in your own right. At the end of it, we would like you to take the 3D printed souvenir of this temple, not only as a piece that you will own, but also appreciating the thought process behind building such heritage structures. Moving on, here's a VR music concert experience. It's a work in progress prototype at the ancient Sharda shrine, which is situated in the inaccessible part of Kashmir. Yet another powerful aspect of VR, it lets you travel to worlds otherwise not possible. We have a digital avatar of the artist performing a composition in the now extinct Sharda script, which floats in space as the concert progresses. Namaste Sharade Devi Kashmir Puravasini Ladies and gentlemen, I believe I am on a sole purpose mission here and I believe one can leverage technology for good. Most of today's tech focuses on humans being the problem and technology being the solution. But I personally believe humans are the solution and not the problem. Technology need not be a dividing facet for humanity, but one that unites us all. We believe that history for the long time has been uninteresting, filled with dates, dynasties and wars. We want to challenge and change that narrative to present history in a way never attempted before. Hope to see you all in our journey to put the grand narrative of ancient India on the world stage and realize the depth and power of our heritage and you know at the root of it all realize who we are and what we can do to make our world, the real world, a better place to live in. Thank you for your time, interest and patience.